Here is the Phase I Conqueror, the largest and heaviest tank in current production, possessing many new features. Heavily armoured, it carries a 120mm gun as main armament. Inside the main turret, coaxially mounted with it, is a .30 Browning machine gun, invisible from outside. There is another 30 Browning mounted on and controlled from the commander's turret. The armament is normally power controlled, although hand controls are provided. The commander's turret is also power operated and can be rotated independently of the main turret. A new principle, however, is that the commander can completely override the gunner's functions. He can measure range, lay and fire from his own turret if he so wishes. It follows then that the fire control system is something new. Let us look into it. Here is the tank. Located within it is the main turret. Within the main turret is the commander's turret. Here are the crew. The driver sits in his compartment. In the main turret, the gunner sits on the right. Standing on the left is the loader. The commander sits in the fire control turret. Now, normally, the conqueror's commander would select a target, measure the range to it, and lay the gun onto the target. He would order the gunner to fire and give him the necessary corrections to hit the target. But now, the commander can, if and when he wishes, do it all himself. Now let us see the individual responsibilities of the crew with this equipment and how they each use it. First, the driver's gun control equipment. Since he is in the way, let him disappear. On his left side, he controls the master switch. When the master switch is off, all electrical circuits throughout the tank are broken. For the driver's own safety, a traverse safety switch is fitted. When off, he can safely leave the tank. On the driver's right, the gun position indicator shows the gun's relation to the hull and thus if the driver can dismount. The throttle, choke, and switches of the auxiliary generator are his responsibility. Here they are again, choke lever and throttle lever. Starter switch, generator switch, and ignition switch. That completes the driver's responsibility concerning the gun control equipment. Next, the gunner. Melt him away, too. In the top right of his compartment, he has a trimming and switch unit consisting of two warning lights uppermost. Below them is the alternator switch, and below again, the metadyne switch. At the side is the elevation trimmer. Below the switch unit is the power traverse controller. This incorporates a grip switch. Forward of the power traverse controller is the hand traverse controller. Forward of the gunner's left hand is the power elevation controller. This controller has a firing switch in the handle. Further left still of the gunner is the hand elevation controller. In front of the gunner's face is the range and sight gear consisting basically of a periscope and range gear. The periscope incorporates a times one window, a times six sight, and a range scale reflector through which the gunner can read the range scales. Below this is the range adjuster. This indicator shows any sideways tilt of the tank. By the gunner's right shoulder is a distribution box on which are grouped most of his switches. This trigger controls the periscope washer. Here is a closer view. Opposite, behind the perspex screen, is the emergency power traverse switch. It would be as well to look at all these parts again and see how they function. Here is the trimming and switch unit again, with warning lights, alternator and metadyne switches, and at the side, the elevation trimmer. 
the alternator switch is always switched on two minutes before the metadyne switch. Do see that the loader is clear before switching the metadynes on, because the gun will probably jump and may cause injury when the gun control equipment takes over. The gun is now on power and stabilized in elevation whilst the tank is moving. Since the stabilizer has nothing to do with shooting, the gunner has no control over the gun in elevation until the tank stops. Here are the two warning lights once more. The upper tells the gunner the main armament is loaded and ready to fire, and the lower that the tank is traveling without the stabilizer system operating. The knob at the side trims out any tendency for the gun to creep when controlled by the stabilizer. The power traverse controller is here. On pressing the grip switch, the hand traverse is disconnected and the turret will now traverse in the required direction. Speed of traverse will increase as the controller is inclined from the vertical. Slow speed is quite slow enough and smooth enough for fine adjustments to be made onto a target. Releasing the grip switch makes this control non-effective and puts the hand traverse control into engagement. Power elevation is controlled by this handle. Elevate. Depress. It permits very fine control for laying on a target. It also incorporates the firing finger switch. Slightly to one side, a vertical wheel gives hand elevation when the metadynes are switched off so that the handle will not rotate when on power. The range and sighting gear is simple to operate. This incorporates a non-magnifying window. Here is a view through it. Traversing and elevating. The circle shows which part of the field of view is visible in the site below. This has a time six magnification. It also holds a sighting graticule graduated in mills. Next to the time six site are the range scales seen through this eyepiece. Here they are. There are five main armament scales, one for each type of ammunition, and the appropriate reading is set by means of a cursor. For instance, using APDS, this is the setting for one 200 yards. If Hesh were in use, the range would be set here. A mark showing 400 yards for the MG, which has its own scale incorporated within the APDS scale, is shown here. The range scale is adjusted by this knurled wheel, the gun being automatically adjusted in elevation as the range is altered. So that the gunner can look through both eyepieces at once, the distance between them can be varied to suit the distance between the gunner's eyes. This device, the Trunnion Tilt Indicator, measures the sideways tilt of the gun in mills. By reading up from the bubble, the correction can be found for the particular range and ammunition. In this case, at 2200, left two mills. The two mill deflection is applied on the graticule pattern. Normally, when the center dot is on the target, the gun is correctly laid. To apply two mils deflection left, this point two mils away is applied instead, and so on.